Welcome back to the Marketing Ninja Podcast with Manuel Suarez, CEO of Attention Grabbing Media and author of number one bestseller, Marketing Magic. I have a special guest that I have been seeing his content since before I knew what the word marketing meant. This individual is somebody that I believe to be one of the greatest marketing minds the world has seen. And he's been doing this for probably close to 50 years or more. It is a pleasure to have you here today with us in the AGR Marketing Headquarters, Mr. Artie Marin. Thanks for being here on the show today. You're very welcome, thanks. You know, with that introduction, it seems as if I was doing my marketing on stone tablets, you know, and sending them out. But it has been a half a century. Wow, you probably have so many stories to tell. Having seen also the industry dramatically change time and time again, yeah. right, to where we are here today. Oh, yeah. I just thought that it would be amazing to have you on the show today and just talk about marketing, talk about your journey, talk about your story. To pick up on one thing you said about the changes, I can, I can tell you the changes in one word, speed. You know, in the old days, you know, I mean, we're talking about mail, right? Like you put something in an envelope and you send it, postcards, which is still done this day, but it was, it was much slower. Now we're talking instant reaction. And that's your expertise, how to create that instant reaction. And that is not easy. Some people think like, well, you can do that on volume. You know, if you just, if you send it enough and you send enough people, then, you know, and, and they're missing the fact that it takes expertise. So speed is a, is a very crucial word Huge. in marketing. Yeah. Has it always been crucial? If you go back to 1970s when you were doing marketing campaigns already? No, no. I mean, we're talking about in those days, it might be a, a postcard or a mailer once a week. And of course, you didn't know whether they got the mail necessarily uh, or they threw it away or, you know, and it was expensive and so on. So you had to be really, you know, marketers who made it in those days were really good at their work because they tracked it in terms of response and they watched it real close, but it was long. You know, I, I'm reminded one of my early clients was Howard Ruff, and that's not gonna be known by most of your listeners, but Howard Ruff was the gold king, and gold was a big deal in the early 70s. He wrote a book, I forget the name of it, but it was about gold, bestseller, and I was hired to help his marketing and I immediately went to do a survey because that was also relatively new. I mean, yeah, there were marketing agencies who were surveying, but not the regular business owner. You know, the, the normal guy or gal, they just sent out promo, whatever. So we did a survey, um, which I'm very proud of even this day because Howard Ruff was looking for investment in gold. And I crafted this question which was, if you had an eighth day of the week, what would you do with it? And that was designed to get a response that said, oh, I'd go fishing, or I'd go out in the mountains with my family, or whatever. So we were able to target the fact that if you buy gold, it's going up, and you'll be able to go fishing and whatever. Um, but that was another factor then, speed, uh, survey, those are two of the main things I can think of right offhand. Well, that's great. So how have you adjusted to how short of attention span in this era we have? Like when you think about the social media world, the supposedly the numbers have went down to six seconds, like attention span, like people yeah. don't want to watch things, listen to things yeah. or pause. Let's say somebody is an influencer. They're trying to get attention of people. They're trying to impact people with their content, with their message. What advice would you have for them in this era? Well, let me, let me tell you a story about Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill was asked, if you're going to give a talk for three hours, how long does it take you to prepare? He said, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. They said, what if the talk was five minutes? How long would it take you to prepare for that? He said, three or four hours. So the point I'm making is the shorter the time span, the more preparation. Interesting. Because you have less time to make an impact. You know, I, I call it eye, eye contact, right? In live events, it's eye contact, right? But what we're doing, it's eye contact, meaning impression, uh, uh, impact, those kind of eyes, right? And of course, ultimate eye is the sincerity. 
If you're not prepared, you don't have the power behind your message. So it, you don't get a lot of the person. Mm. The, the beauty of live activity, and I've seen you perform, the beauty of live activity is it's live. They can feel it. You can't feel a video. If you're good, you can, you can get it across, but it's not quite the same. But even with video uh, or whatever the case may be now, it's preparation, right? Yeah, you can wing it, but if you're winging it, you better have a bunch of years behind you. Right. You know? so, so that leads me to a specific question about me because you've seen me perform, like you said right now. Right. You can probably coach me. I can probably just sit down with you and talk for hours a day, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't know if I can afford you. I, I can try. Mm -hmm. But Artie, in, in my case, I don't prepare. I don't. I wing it. And I usually do a decent job of it. Uh, not, not for, not, it's not my opinion of it. I, I get people to buy the stuff that I sell and it happens consistently. So that is my evidence. My evidence is are people interested enough in what I'm saying that they buy my stuff? Maybe it's because of the years that I've been on it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I prepare for the webinars. I prepare for that a lot. I deliver a two hour webinar, maybe an hour and a half webinar. And it takes me six hours to prepare that webinar. That's true, right on that But you're case. winging it in front of a live audience, right? Correct. Yeah, so you're not really winging it. See? Because when you're in front of a live audience, you're getting feedback. You're getting hints flow from the audience where you can tell, oh, I'm on the right direction. And when you're on the right direction, it puts you even more on the direction. Now you have momentum, right? The reason that you prepare for the video <laughs> is there is no feedback, you see. So you've got to be right on the mark. The human mind is comfortable with things in sequence. This follows this follows this. And if they're doing, you know, A, B, and then R, it's a, you can get away with it, but it's a little bit, oh, what happened to C? Okay, so it, it sticks them a little bit. So I'm a, I'm a real big fan of sequence. Of course. Right? And that sequence has to be the right runway. Well, how do you know that? Well, you, know, you learn that from your public. Again, going back to the difference between the live event or the, those that are doing um, email marketing and all of that. The more you know about that public, the better you're able to deliver that message. And then, of course, it's ready, fire, aim. We're not talking about surveying for the next four years, right? It's ready, fire, aim. One of the greatest surveys is, I shot this out, what happened? I'm not going to spend $14 million on that shot. I'm going to keep it on the cheap, get my response, tweak it. Oh, I got a bigger response. That's what I did with Howard Ruff, by the way, on that postcard that I told you about, which was a postcard. That question, when I first got approached to him, you'll, you'll like this. How many postcards are you going to do? He says, we're going to do about a million. Now, this is 1971. I said, a million postcards, you know how much money that is? And he said, no, 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 you're missing the point. I'm not going to send out a million postcards on the first mailing. I'm going to do two, three, four thousand postcards. I'm going to watch the response. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. If it's working, I'm going to send out 10,000 postcards, you know, and then 20,000. And that's basically how it was in the, the marketing with materials and no electronics, you know, and it's funny, I never thought I'd be sitting here, you know, talking about the old days or the, you know, times gone by when we used paper. That's very important because it's, uh, it shows us also any marketer, any business owner that wants to learn, that's anybody that's watching this right now or listening to this, the same basics are applicable today. You can't just go deep into a marketing campaign without enough data that is working or not working. I learned in management that many business owners are using the management side to hide the inefficiencies they have in marketing. Mm. In other words, they're going to organize things so well somehow that word of mouth will help them come and so on. And here's the biggest point. And this is a point for you too in your I don't prepare for live seminars. It's what you don't know, meaning you do great. You get people, they sign up, compared to what? 
well, compared to some other guy, compared to that, compared to what I did last year. How about the potential? Exactly. How much more That's is being left exact on the table? word I was going to use, right? We don't know the people you didn't get, right? Because they didn't quite get it and maybe it wasn't prepared enough. And it's the same thing with the marketers now or the people who are managing uh, and they're doing okay. But I always say, compared to what? Correct. Because you can always improve, period. Exactly. You can always get better. Of it course. just never ends. The moment that you start feeling like, oh, I'm so good at it already, that I don't think I can improve, that's the moment that whoop, start going downhill. Of course. You know, that's the problem with old marketers, if I can say it that way, because they're stuck in some ways. They say, yeah, but it works. You know, I've been doing it for years. This is what I do. It works. Yeah, but again, it works compared to compared what? Compared to what? You see? That's right. So that's great. You know, that's the message. That's awesome. Hey, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, go ahead, leave us a review and subscribe to tune in for future episodes. And if you're looking for a team that'll go above and beyond for you and your brand, go to talktoaninja.com today.